physicsinfo.co.uk Another in the series of GCSE tutorials. Stopping distances and crashing. The stopping distance of a vehicle is made up of the sum of the thinking distance plus the braking distance. The advert shows why being able to stop okay, is important. Okay, we want to see a girly one, don't we? Yeah. Alex, feel with your love love later. Just come on, let's get in the car. Might be able to get there before the sequel, yeah? <laughs> Oh, Looks at like you, guys. Bet you his mum doesn't even know he's got the car. <laughs> I still can't believe he passed first time, Alex. <laughs> oh, Alex, you have to be in the driver's seat to drive, you know. <laughs> You're right, Kate. Alex, get in, Come on, Alex, it's not a video game now. You need to please and drive the car. 10 mil in the trunk, okay? They're shooting down the road, there's guns everywhere. This bit, hey. The guy who's got the hostages on the train. Going mental and stuff. Oh, no, no, Jamie, no. what's it? Are you serious? Come out. Alex, beat him to the lights. Yeah, Alex, beat him to the lights. Oh, My mum doesn't even do phone right now. <laughs> Alex, 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 So what are the stopping and braking distances according to the highway code? You can see that as the speed doubles, the distance travelled whilst thinking also doubles. It's directly proportional. But as the speed doubles, the distance travelled whilst braking goes up four times. It's the square of the increase. 20 miles per hour, 12 metres, or three car lengths. 40 miles per hour, 36 meters, or nine car lengths. 60 miles per hour, 73 meters, or 18 car lengths. Thinking distance. The thinking distance is the distance a car travels before the driver brakes. It's related to the driver's reaction time. Thinking distance is directly proportional to speed. Human reaction times vary, but the accepted value is around 0.25 seconds. There are a number of factors that affect human reaction time, such as drink, drugs and the distraction of mobile phones or people in the car. This driver was texting as he drove down the road, with the inevitable consequences. Braking distance. The braking distance is the distance the car travels once the brakes are applied. A number of factors affect braking. There's how heavily laden the vehicle is, the total mass of the vehicle. Hey, 
Перегруз. Перегруза нету, о, гармошка пошла в бой. А сколько, сколько вас тут? Семь, восемь, девять, десять, тридцать, двенадцать, тринадцать, шестнадцать, шестнадцать, всю бригаду привезли, все в сборе. Нормально, эконом класс прокатил. Ну что, все, пошли на вагоны. Another factor could be the state of the road or the friction between the tyres and the road. Then, there's the state of the brakes. That's if you have any. Leclerc behind has a problem. Leclerc behind has got the problem. Oh, he can't stop! And he has gone straight on into Brendan Harley. You can see that that was coming. I had no brakes. Brakes went uh, completely off. Charles Leclerc's first ever home Grand Prix in Monaco has ended with retirement and big damage as well to the Toro Rosso of Brendan Harley. Leclerc had no chance to get out of the way. And finally, there's the speed of the vehicle. All of these will affect the braking distance. The heavier a vehicle, or the faster it travels, the greater its kinetic energy. Also, the greater its momentum. From the cartoon book, kinetic energy is equal to half times mass times velocity squared. Momentum is a vector quantity. Momentum is equal to mass multiplied by the velocity. Newton's third law also says that the force experienced in a crash is equal to the rate of change of momentum. The longer a collision takes, the less the force experienced. We sometimes talk about inertial mass, and this is a measure of how difficult it is to start something that isn't moving, or how difficult it is to stop something that is moving. The greater the mass, the greater the difficulty. Once a car goes out of control and starts to crash, your fate is determined, largely by physics. In this video, we'll investigate the relationship between stopping distance and average force, and how speed affects the kinetic energy of a vehicle.
How does an egg carton stop eggs from breaking? Why do you bend your knees when landing from a jump? What principles of physics help us to explain what we see here? A car acts like the cardboard box. When the car crashes, it's better for the car to crumple than the people inside it. What causes the difference in force between smashing into a wall and controlled braking? The difference is related to the stopping distance. We can test this by varying the stopping distance and measuring the average force on an object in the car. To do this, we've placed a 40 kilogram sandbag on a trolley. Against the cargo restraint are some bathroom scales. When the car brakes, the sandbag will slide forward and push against the scales, showing us the average force on the sandbag. This can be directly read from the scales and is measured in kilograms force. As you physics buffs know, multiply this by 9.8 to get newtons, the standard measurement of force. Remember that forces come in pairs. The sandbag acts on the scales and the scales act on the sandbag. The pair of forces are equal in size but act in opposite directions. In this case we'll concentrate on the force on the sandbag. We'll do a series of tests in which the speed remains constant but the stopping distance varies. In each case the driver will brake evenly using the same braking force from a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. We'll repeat this over three different distances, measuring the average force on the sandbag. When the car stops over a distance of 40 metres, the average stopping force is 10 kilograms force. Now let's stop in 20 metres, half the distance. The average stopping force is doubled to 20 kilograms force. Now let's stop in half the distance again. The minimum distance you can stop in at this speed is 12 metres and the average force is 33 kilograms force. If a vehicle was stopped in 5 metres, the average force would be 80 kilograms force. And if it was stopped in 2.5 metres, the average force would be 160 kilograms force. This graph tells us that force and distance are inversely proportional to each other. This means simply that as stopping distance becomes shorter, the force becomes greater. Scientists represent this in the following way. Force times distance equals a constant value. So, what's the link between this formula and the examples we saw earlier? How does this formula help us to understand what happens in a real car crash? At the crash test laboratory, new cars are tested as part of a consumer information program called NCAP. The test dummies are fitted with accelerometers, which record the force of the crash at different points on their bodies. They are painted at likely contact points to show where they come into contact with the car. The impact on the car itself is also monitored. Using laser technology, the dummies are precisely aligned so that one model of car can be directly compared with another. The cars are crashed at 56.3 kilometers per hour, an internationally agreed test speed. Information taken from the tests will be analyzed, then published. You can see the dummy's head has contacted here and it's contacted with the steering wheel, deforming it. On the other side, we also have knee contact, um, and also the head is contacted the knee from where the seatbelt is stretched. Our whole aim of the program is to get safer vehicles in the long term through publishing the results and making safety sell cars. Modern cars are designed so that the occupant capsule stays intact while the body of the car crumples. This crumpling increases the stopping distance, which reduces the forces on the occupants. 
Now we'll compare average force and stopping distance represented by the crush in different vehicles. Over a series of new car assessment tests, the overall crush on the vehicle was measured. The average crush for large cars was found to be 0.57 of a metre. The average stopping force on the sandbag is 702 kilograms force. Smaller cars stopped in an average of 0.56 of a metre, a similar distance to the larger cars. The average stopping force on a sandbag would be 710 kilograms force. A van has less bonnet, so there's less distance to crush before it crumples into the occupant's space. The average stopping distance of the vans tested was 0.44 of a metre. And the average stopping force on a sandbag would be 910 kilograms force. If we plot the stopping distances on this graph, we can see that the shorter the stopping distance, the greater the force on the occupants. Car design can only go so far when it comes to protecting occupants at high speeds. Other safety features are needed to help prevent injury. One of Newton's laws of motion says that a moving body will keep moving unless something forces it to stop. The crash barrier stops the vehicle, but the load keeps travelling until it too is forced to stop. In this case, the force of the load is enough to break through the cabin. If a person is not restrained by a seatbelt and the car stops, the same thing happens. The car has stopped, but the person doesn't until something forces them to. The idea of a seat belt is to hold you in place while the car crumples, so you slow down at the same rate as the car does. Seat belts are designed to stretch, which increases the stopping distance and reduces the forces on you. However, in a severe crash, even with seat belts holding the body in place, the head can reach the steering wheel or dashboard. This is where airbags come in. In addition to seat belts, modern cars have introduced airbags. Unlike the rigid steering wheel or dashboard, the airbag gives you extra stopping distance, which reduces the forces on you. The design of the airbag gives flexibility, and air escapes through vents, which increases the stopping distance. Modern road design also uses the same principle of increasing a car's stopping distance to increase safety. For example, these ends built into roads are designed to absorb energy on impact in a controlled way and to increase stopping distance. Small trees and shrubs are purposely planted to increase a vehicle's stopping distance. Let's look at the effect of speed in a series of controlled crashes. Kinetic energy is proportional to the square of the speed. Kinetic energy also depends on the mass of a car. The greater the mass, the more kinetic energy. Now let's look at how change in kinetic energy, or change in speed, affects the distance over which we stop. For each of these tests, we'll use the same brake effort and the car will come to a controlled stop. At 25 kilometres per hour, this car took approximately two and a half metres to stop. To test our formula, at double the speed, it should take four times the distance to stop. 
At three times the speed, it should take nine times the distance to stop. And at four times the speed, it should take 16 times the distance to stop. So let's see what happened in the tests. At 50 kilometers per hour, it takes approximately four times the distance to stop. At 75 kilometers per hour, it takes approximately nine times the distance to stop. At 100 kilometers per hour, it should take 16 times the distance to stop. In actual fact, it takes a longer distance to stop because there is less friction acting on the car at high speed. Now we'll see the effect of increased speed in a crash. In this series of variable speed tests, the same model car is crashed into the wall at different speeds. The energy is proportional to speed squared. When we compare the crash at 50 kilometers per hour with the crash at double the speed, we can see a dramatic... To recap, we found that as you go faster, your kinetic energy increases. In order to stop, you need to convert the car's kinetic energy into other forms of energy. This is achieved by applying a stopping force over distance. In part one, we learnt that the average stopping force is inversely proportional to the distance over which the car stops. Simply, this means as the stopping distance decreases, the average force increases. So, to reduce the forces on you in a crash, you need to increase the stopping distance. In part two, we found that kinetic energy is equal to half the mass of the car times the speed squared. So, stopping distance is proportional to the square of the speed. So, to bring these concepts together, we find that the best way to reduce the forces on us is to stop over a longer distance. Which means we need to reduce the speed at which we are driving. The front of a car is designed to crumple, to absorb energy, but it has its limits. At high speeds, the rest of the car will crumple as well. And that's it. Thank you for listening.